Hi everyone, my name is David Duarte and I'm from University of Oklahoma. And my research is a rock and fracture characterization of the wood crochet along the I-35 outcrow. So the outcrow is located along the Interstate 35 in the South Oklahoma in the Arboco Mountains. So this is our outcrow. Uh, we measure at 80 feet of the outcrow wood floor. So and every single feet, foot we have uh, re natural radioactivity data and also we have two samples, at least two samples, two samples per foot. So based on the natural radioactivity profile and the eye growth, we figure out that uh, the natural radioactivity depicts the churching ratio. So what it means? It means that uh, in a foot with more chert, uh, the radioactivity is going to be low. But in a pool with more shell, so a low shell shell ratio, it means high radioactivity. Um, an important tool to recognize the different kind of shells, you have to know about the pattern and stratification response of the rock. So, thicker and harder flakes, it means silicious shell, and thinner and softer flakes, it means argillation shell. So based on that, elitophases were recognized, these elitophases, based on specimen and hand specimen scale. So these elitophases uh, were classified on textural and composition alternative diagrams. And we recognize that the argillaceous shell and the siliceous shell are our soft or ditty uh, rocks and the early little fishes are our brittle or hard lithologies. So based on the natural radioactivity and the output, we recognize three main patterns, the increasing number, increasing number and blocky patterns. So these are the picture of the bottom of each pattern and these are the picture of the top of each pattern. So in the decreasing above pattern, so we recognize that at the bottom is more shiny and at the top is more shiny. It means that the Churchill ratio increase uh, upward, but the gamma ray uh, decrease upward. Then the increasing upward pattern we have at the bottom is more churchy and at the top is more shelly. It means that the churchy ratio decreases upward, but the natural radioactivity increases upward. And finally, we have um, a compact churchy bed in the blocky patterns, so it's no variation in the natural radioactivity profile as you can see here. Then in the detailed fracture analysis, we make counting uh, the perfect bed bounded fracture that is this one. In a, every single bed contained in an area of 1 by 3 feet. So in every single bed we recorded if it's hard or soft, bed thickness, number of fracture, fracture filling material, fracture orientation, or fracture spacing. And based on this methodology, we recognize two main sets. These sets are oriented 60 degrees from each other, and then we plotted the fractures in a stereographic projection. Uh, based on this stereographic projection, we made um, a stress uh, ellipse, and we uh, recognize or we determine the maximum horizontal stress. This one that is oriented north 45 degrees is. And finally, we correlate the fracture analysis and the stratigraphic. So, as you can see here in the water, in the bottom of the outcrop, we have more beds per foot and a, than the number on the top. And also we have more fracture per foot at the bottom than in the top. So, we made a cross plot between the, na the number of fracture per bed and the number of beds per foot. And we have, as you can see, an excellent uh, direct relationship between them. So, the more beds per foot, the more number of fracture per foot. Also, the more beds per foot means a uh, thinner bed. Also, we recognize that uh, in the whole section, the halitologist hair has more fracture than the soft lithologist. And also, uh, we recognize that the density is our final conclusion. So, because uh, we have two main closer, the soft beds and the hard beds. So, the less bed thickness, we have more fracture density. And to show this, we made this uh, fracture map. For example, in, the, in this fracture map, we have in one foot more beds than in this one. 
and as you can see here, there are more fracture density than in these foods.